Hello, welcome to Natural Disasters. We're headed for an exciting semester of watching disasters happen and trying to understand what actually made them so bad. To start, let's just get on the same page with some terminology. A natural hazard is any process that poses a threat to human life or property. A natural hazard is called a natural disaster only when it actually causes significant damage to life or property. For example, hail can be considered a natural hazard, and when it hails hard enough to damage the roof of a car, then that event could be called a natural disaster, even if it isn't a very large one. We measure the effect of natural disasters in two ways. We re report the amount of dollars in damage, basically how much it would take to re restore and repair everything. We also count the number of people injured or dead. It's also important to remember that some things can't be measured in dollars or deaths. For example, the sentimental value of photographs that burned in a fire or your favorite shoes that got washed away in a flood or a pet that dies. So to start out, we're going to take a tour of a few natural hazards from the last week or so. As we watch these videos of recent events, think about the following questions. How did this event come about? How severe does this seem? Did people die? What kinds of economic and social consequences might be associated with this event? Could it have been minimized or even prevented? Overnight, the sprawl of more than 500 California wildfires surged in a relentless march of flames. Heart is hit the north, where the state's largest fires are churning through wine country, incinerating homes, reducing whole neighborhoods to piles of rubble and ash. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Krista Petrillo Hafner oh, no. lost most of her livestock, including her horses and goats, as the flames swept through her parents' ranch. The devastation is just, it's amazing. If I stop to think about it too long, it overwhelms me. Today was a very hard day. So far, the fires have scorched more than 770,000 acres, destroying more than 500 structures, forcing the evacuations of thousands. At least five people have died. It's just been fire after fire. I mean, it's crazy. Meanwhile, firefighters battling back on the front lines are stretched to their breaking point. I've never seen something like this in 34 years fighting fire. The governor saying nearly all of the state's firefighting resources have been exhausted, forcing officials to call in help from 10 states and two countries. We have over 12,000 firefighters now actively working to suppress these larger complex fires. It's been a, a real roller coaster. Somehow, Sonoma Valley ranch owner Ed Newell says crews were able to save his entire property after the fire torched nearly everything in the area. Do you think it would be standing when no. you got back? No, we had seen some video on Wallace Creek and we assumed we were coming back and seeing it lost. A small silver lining peeking through all the smoke, but residents here know a painful reality that fire season is just getting started. And the state is and the state's record heat wave also expected to continue after Death Valley recorded the hottest temperature on Earth earlier this week, 130 degrees. And unfortunately, all this heat, just more fuel to the fire.
Welcome to Friday evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. We fielded several phone calls about houses shaking, buildings shaking, feeling the ground moving in Monroe County. Well, it is not your imagination, folks. Those of you who are in Monroe County near the city of Monroe, we had an earthquake this evening at 6.55 p.m. That was just about an hour and a half ago, uh, about just under two miles south-southeast of Detroit Beach. That's where the epicenter was. Intensity was weak to, uh, to light, so it was a very minor quake, 3.2 to 3.4 magnitude on the Richter scale, but felt as far away as places like Novi, the southwest side of Detroit, even southern Macomb County around Warren. So far, no other quakes, but I'll keep an eye on it for you. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. More coming up at 11 o'clock. We only looked at a snapshot of what's happened and only over the past week or month. It's clear that the different natural disasters have really different impacts. Which type of natural disaster do you think kills the most people? I'll pause here briefly and you can go take the poll in ReggieNet. You can come back later to show the poll again as more people take it to see the updated results. Here's the actual data. This is a figure from your textbook as noted by the figure 1.3 in the lower right. Take a moment to orient yourself to this pie chart showing the percentage of deaths due to different types of natural disasters. Is this what you expected? Most deaths are due to heat and drought, something that is more related to large scale climate rather than specific events. But the next most deaths are related to flooding from rain or the ocean water, bad winter weather, and summer storms with tornadoes. Note that hurricanes specifically are not listed here, and that's because the damage and deaths from hurricanes typically occurs as a storm surge from ocean water rising or from flooding associated with the rainfall. So those deaths are categorized in a different way in this chart. So, how many people actually do die each year? Well, it does depend. You can see that this graph shows um, time along that x-axis and then the 
number of deaths in thousands of people um, from this along the y-axis. So we're looking at a time period of about the last 20 years. Last year, in 2019, about 11,000 people around the world died from various natural disasters. But you can see from the data that in some years, as many as 250,000 people died. How many of those deaths could have been prevented? In this course, we will explore questions like what led to all these events? Could they have been prevented? How extensive was the impact? And how could the damage have been reduced?